여러분 안녕하세요. 이번 시간에는 존 라미네즈 전 사탄 숭배자의 이야기를 하도록 하겠습니다. 존 라미네즈는 마귀를 섬기는 자에서 하나님을 섬기는 자로 거듭났습니다. 지금은 마귀를 대적하는 방법들을 자세하게 알려주는 사역을 하고 있는데요. 마귀는 허풍쟁이고 하나님을 이길 수 없다고 합니다. 마귀가 들어오는 통로들을 폭로하고 있는데 그것은 우리가 매우 일상적으로 즐기는 것들입니다. 또한 방언의 중요성에 대해서 매우 강조하고 있습니다. 존 라미네즈의 영상을 보시겠습니다. And his passion, based on his former knowledge, is to keep you three steps ahead of the devil. Now, you know, all of us have had real challenges in our lives, but uh, John, uh, You really had challenges. Your father practiced uh, something called Santeria, Santeria. Uh, which is a, a, just a demonic religion, I assume? Yes, it's the number one demonic religion in the world today. And, and um, uh, your father and your mother, constant turmoil. He used to beat her. Uh, uh, but when you were eight years old, your mom took you to a tarot reader. What happened? My mom, my mom was going with my aunt, and basically, when I got there, the, the, the lady, the witch, that they, they, we read the cards. Uh, she, she focused on me. She didn't focus on my mom. She didn't focus on my aunt. She told uh, the, the, my mom that uh, that she saw in, in the spirit that I was going to lose my eyesight. That if I didn't get a, a ceremony done within the next 30 days, I was going to be completely blind. Mm -hmm. So my mom panicked, as every mother would, and uh, my mom allowed me to get the cards read. The lady read, and uh, they, they went on. And a couple of days later, they initiated me to the dark side at the age of eight years old. And um, when. Uh Uh, at 13, you actually were willing or praying for your father to die? Yes. Yeah, I, 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 would, I, would, I remember as my, I have two other brothers, and we would stay up all night. And he, he beat my mother all night long. So he'll beat my mother all night long. So we'll, we'll, we'll be in the room. Sometimes we'll run out the room to try to help my moms from him beating her. And he would throw us around. And then we'll go back into the room. And so one day I sat in the bed and, and started to pray. Uh, I was just praying. I wasn't even praying to God. I was, I was just praying, saying, I hope he dies. I hope he dies. I hope someone kills him. And at the age of 13 years old, my father got shot at the age of 33 in the face for a woman at a social club when he had a good wife home. Did you feel guilty about that? I was rejoicing, uh, to be truthfully honest. I was, I was rejoicing because I know the torment and the pain in my house and the silent pain to go to school and put up a face at the, as a young boy and act like everything was okay home, to put up a face and knowing that there was no but torment in my house. Uh, you began to really grow in the demonic. Uh, uh, and you, why did you feel Satan was your father? My father was a devil worshiper. And I came from a generation of devil worship on my father's side from generations and generations of Santeria, spiritualism, car readings, uh, Palama Yumbe. Palama Yumbe is when you sell your soul to the devil and you make a contract with the blood, which I did and later on in my years. And uh, I would sit with the devil and speak to the devil all night long. I was going to demon church at the age of eight years old from seven in the evening to five in the morning to be trained with principalities, a demonic spirit, territorial spirit. I was learning stuff in the, in the spirit realm beyond at the age of eight. So. To me, it was, uh, I told the devil, if you kill my father, you know, you can have me. So I told the devil, you can have me. And the devil said, well, I replace the old with the new. Yeah, but God had a secret weapon. Oh, big a time. beautiful woman. And she invited you to church. What happened? It, it, actually, she was a backslider. <laughs> oh. She, she was a backslider. So, so God, God got two for the price of one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happened when you went to that church? Well, I, I, actually, I went to the church. I asked the devil permission. I asked the devil, could I go to church? He said, go to church. Those people are weak. They don't, they don't have no strength against us. They don't have no power against us. You can go to church. But then I was really after, after the girl because she's a pretty girl. And she lived in the neighborhood. So I didn't have to move my car around. So we can go eat anywhere. <laughs> So I thought that was a good deal, but you know, God was setting up a, a game plan, you know, for my life. Uh, well, you really got upset one time with the pastor. What happened? 
Well, you know, the devil, I, I went to church a little too much without asking permission anymore. And then the devil said, the devil showed up in church. In church, the devil showed up and I hear the devil whisper in my ear and tell me, I didn't tell you to come this Sunday. I didn't give you permission to come this Sunday. It was strange because the pastor did an altar call in the, in the middle of the service. Usually they do that like at the end of the service. So I got up. I said, well, if I go by the pastor, the devil don't go after me. He will leave me alone. So when I went up, a whole people came up to the middle. So I was like one of the last ones to pray for. I said, well, I stay here. By the time he come praying, I don't want him to pray for me anyway. But by the time he gets to me, he's tired and the devil's gone. That was my plan. But when he came up to me, the devil possessed me right there. And I grabbed him by the throat and I picked him up in the air. And I said, today's the day you're going to die. And then all these foul stuff came out of my mouth and people jumped out of the sheets. And uh, I mean, big men jumped out of the sheets, tried to grind me down and peel my hands off the pastor's throat. He was turning purple. But he goes home and he prays a prayer, an unbelievable prayer. Listen to this. John cried out to God, if you are bigger than my God, with a small g, although he didn't know it at the time, than my God that I serve, show me tonight or just leave me alone. When we come back, we're going to find out what happened from that prayer. Well, I'm here with John Ramirez, and uh, John, uh, his whole life was devoted to his father, the devil. He literally had that relationship with the devil. And uh, a pretty girl uh, says, let's go to church. He goes to this church. He almost kills the pastor. The devil just had total control over him. He, he, he goes home, and he cries out to God, if you are bigger than the God I serve, show me, or just leave me alone. After you prayed that prayer, what happened? I, I just sat on the bed, it was just something that just came out, it wasn't even planned, and uh, because I really didn't want to be a Christian. Uh, I thought Christianity was not for me, it was just something that it was my taste, my cup of tea, my thing was devil worshiping, recruiting people, running regents, putting spells on people, making a lot of money doing that. But I, I went into this deep sleep, like an anesthesia sleep, and I ended up in this train that was going faster than anything you can imagine. And the train was filled with people, but the people, you couldn't see the faces because their faces were blank. And when the train crashed and hit, opened up the, opened up the doors and I ended up in hell. And when I ended up in hell... Now, I, now, you say that you had this dream, but you also told me earlier that it really was a real experience. It was a real experience. It, it, this was more more real than the oxygen I breathe, Sid. This was more real than the oxygen I breathe. I, I, there was no way for me to leave 25 years of devil worshiping at a hundred thousand dollar witchcraft stuff in my house for, naming, for a guy named Jesus that I never seen in my life. So you find yourself in hell. I what find happened? myself in hell. Uh, I, I'm running through the, through the portals of hell, trying to find a way out, a window, a door. And then, uh, the, first of all, this fear grips on you like, like, like a garment and, and, and it grips on you and then you hear wailing and you hear so much thing going on at the same time you're so desperate you want to get out and when I'm trying to get out the devil shows up in hell and tells me I'm gonna keep you here you know too much about the occult you know too much I give you too much rank too much secrets I need to destroy you so as he's saying that he's coming he's gonna launch at me as he's launching towards me this cross up here in hell and I put it on him and he fell out like a toddler and, and, and I, so I got back up and I ran and then he tells me I, somewhere down the deeper part of hell he shows up again he said I'm going to destroy you so here I am talking with him in demonic tongues because the devil copies everything from the kingdom of Jesus Christ he can't create, he can't create he's, a thing he's a counterfeit he's a artist. counterfeit bootleg and a copycat <laughs> <laughs> for real so, so here I am and, and, and here I am there he comes out again and then I told him, I'm going to destroy you, I told him. And I showed him the marks that I had sold myself. He said, he said, oh, you're a fool. I give you those marks. You, I own you. Again, he went to grab me for the last time. The cross of Jesus Christ appeared. And, and, as a, and he fell. I mean, he, he actually fell on the foot of the cross. He just fell down on the foot of the cross like he was worshiping. He fell down like nothing. I woke up out of a dream. It's like when, when, when you're in ICU and you hit those things on, on, your, on, your, on your chest to bring you back to life. That's what happened to me. It was something hit me. I came back into life. And I knew that night that Yeshua was the truth, the way, and the life. And I bent my knee. So, you, you, you tell me that you now have a new father. Who's your father? I have a father that I can't even describe. He has to be revealed. That's how awesome he is. 
the days, everything of my tormenting days, the days of my father. There's one thing that I, that, that, that I, I asked John off the air. I said, John, you went through a lot of stuff. I mean, if you could get free from the devil, anyone could get free. But aren't you fearful today? What did you say to me? The only fear I carry in my heart for life, because I'm doing a life sentence with Jesus Christ, and I want no parole. <laughs> so the only life, the only one I fear is God, is Yeshua, the Messiah. This is the only person I fear. You I know, fear no devil. I fear no witch. I fear no voodoo. I fear no witchcraft. I fear no man, but the man, Jesus Christ. You know, I had an experience yesterday uh, in my office, and John was there. Uh, for about a month, I've had a demonic force that has just been at me and at me and at me. So I said, what, would you pray for me? And here's what surprised me. He prayed for me. That didn't surprise me. But the way he prayed surprised me. He said to me after he prayed, you're not going to have a problem with that demon again. How did you know that? I said, God is good. <laughs> and he, that's guaranteed. It, that's, that's what he told me. He says, guaranteed. guaranteed you're not going to have a problem. No. And guess what? I haven't. <laughs> Okay, uh, John, there are demonic gateways. What are they? The gateways are your mouth, your ear gate, your mouth gate, your eye gate, stuff you watch on television, the videos you play. Can someone watching a wrong movie or something wrong on TV actually have a gateway to the demonic? Oh, absolutely, Sid, because you've got to remember the devil will put something on TV so he, he can... He can, he can uh, Necessize your mind and if you can exercise the person's mind and then a the person don't have the mind of Christ anymore Now you're more addicted to the stuff on TV than going home and spending time with God. So now I stole your prayer closet What what about? So many men including men and women including Christians are now addicted to pornography It, it, it slipped in so easily uh, is, Could that be? Uh, a, a doorway to the demon? Oh, absolutely. The book of Psalm 91 speaks about the four entrapments of the enemy. And one entrapment is the most dangerous one is the young lion. The young lion speaks about the sin that we think we can control, but in the end, if you don't kill it, end up controlling you. So you got 80% 80, 80 of, of people that walk with the Lord, Christians, that are, that are bound to, to pornography because they thought that, hey, I can turn it off anytime I want. I don't have to watch it today. That's what alcoholics say. Well, uh, yes. I can stop anytime, anytime I want. I want. Yeah. But, but they can't. But they can't. Because there's a stronghold, and there's a demon attached to that stronghold. And if you don't break the legal rights and renounce it, you will never be free. Are you telling me that you could pray a prayer as strongly as you prayed in my office yesterday, and they could be free? They can be free. I, I prayed for the gentleman in Japan over the phone. And he was manifesting. I mean, stuff was coming out of his man. And he, he, he turned around, and he sent me a letter. He said, thank you, because Yeshua set me free. I want you to pray for someone at home that wants to be set free of pornography and addictions of any kind. Would Amen. you pray that right no, now? I, I tell you, Sid, God has called me. My purpose, my destiny in the church today is to unmask the devil. And then once I unmask the devil for you, you will see how small he is and how great is your God. Do, I, 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 I have to ask John to do something. I want you to look in that camera and I want you to tell me how small the devil is and I want you God is. Will you do that? I tell you right now, you want to be free, I promise you, in the name of Jesus, you can be free right there from any tormenting spirit, from any spirit, a spirit that's going in your mind, from any combination, any pornographic, any torture, any, any, any tormentors that are sent your way. I break it in the name of Jesus right now. I bind every satanic attack over your life, your purpose, your destiny, pornography, anything that is holy, suicide, oppression, depression. I break it. Any pharmacia spirits, I bind it right now. The Lord has told you, the Lord is speaking to me right now. He said he's going to set you free. And once you take that freedom, you give it back to Jesus. Now, be free in Jesus' name, the unmatchable name of Jesus. Now, yeah, John is going to ask, unmask the devil when we come back. He's going to say, 
to us from his experience what is the greatest weapon a believer in the Messiah has to expose the devil and I'm telling you you have no fear of the demonic when you know who Jesus is when you know who your father is I mean he is so big the devil trembles when you find this out we're gonna be right back <laughs> John, from your knowledge of back there what are the what's the strongest weapon we have against the devil I, I believe the word of God is the strongest weapon you can ever have in this planet. You have to know how to proper, you have to know how to use it, you have to know how to apply. I, th I think a lot of believers, uh, they, they're not learning how to bring out targets in the enemy's camp. My intimacy with God, it brings me, it gives me authority. And the enemy, the enemy recognize, uh, the enemy recognize that you are a child of God and he knows the authority God has given you. And can anyone have the same authority you have? Oh, God has no respect to person. What should someone do Bend if knee. they're sleeping at night and all of a sudden they feel an oppression, they feel something in the room and it's not good? What would you do? You, you know, I had an incident not too long ago. The devil showed up in my room. I mean, the devil himself showed up in my room and my room went cold like an icebox. And they woke me up. I knew there was something there that wasn't, wasn't pleasant. And, and he tells me, I hear him, and I hear him like, uh, like an audible voice, he said, if you turn on the light, I will leave. And I had the Holy Spirit deep down inside me tell me, if you turn on the light, you have no faith. I, my, and I live by myself, John and two pillows. I got up, I got me some water, I said, I'll see you in the morning. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you and I command you to leave and you got 30 seconds to go. But you see, but see, he knows his authority. I want you to know your authority. The devil trembles when a believer knows the word of God and the authority behind it and the name of Jesus. You told me when you were in the dark side that you used to do something called astral projection. Yes. Go to neighborhoods. What would you be doing in those neighborhoods? I will, I will ask, my mission was to astral project, leave my body. I was so good at it that I would even go during the day in neighborhoods that were daytime and the ones that were nighttime, I would go back and forth and I would put curses and I would bring move principalities from one region to another so there could be patterns and cycles to happen in the spirit round so those people won't grow and they won't meet Jesus. So that was, but they had, um, they had amazing believers that knew how to pray in the spirit that will stop me from going into the neighborhood and executing the plan of the enemy. You're telling me that these believers could, you could not do anything. You couldn't put curses on them? I couldn't even lift up a finger. Thank you, Lord. Now, uh, how important is praying in the spirit, praying in unknown in languages? Spirit in the spirit, it's praying in the spirit. It, 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 it's like if, you don't, if, you don't, if your body doesn't have water, you would die. If the believer today is not praying, praying in the spirit, you would die spiritually. You were telling me about these uh, cycles and patterns. What do you mean by that? Repeat. A lot, a lot of believers today don't know how to cut the rope. A lot of believers today, they're free for six months, then they go back to the bondage for eight months. They cut the rope, and then they go back again because it's like, it's like the enemy knows how to put entrapment on the believer. And then the believer, and then today, I, I have a righteous anger, said, that the church is preaching people happy, but they're not preaching people free. Boy, that's a mouthful. I don't want to go to church to be happy. I can be happy at home. I wanted you to go to church and teach me how to fight the enemy. Teach me how to be free. Teach me how to save my marriage. Teach me how to get my children out of drugs. How to beat that devil like no tomorrow. And I believe I, that's what God has called me to unmask the devil in the times that we're in. And not because of me, it's because who lives in me is greater than he that lives in the world. I believe, that's for sure, I believe that when John prays for you right now, uh, and I am amazed. I'm learning so much so quickly. You think I would know by now? I am learning my authority over sickness, my authority over the demons. Uh, and, and I want you to pray that spirits of infirmity, of sickness, will come off of people. And I'm going to tell you something you've been going to the doctor for for years and years and years, and they're all they're doing is treating the symptoms, and it's not even getting better. You have high blood pressure, and they just give you more medicine. You know what I'm talking about? You just get rid of that spirit of infirmity and watch everything work. Pray that right now.
Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I bind the straw man over the airways in the name of Jesus. I bind the gatekeeper. I bind any reinforcement. I shut down the second and first servant with the blood of Jesus Christ. I paralyze every devil, every hell, every demon. I paralyze an infirmity and sickness right now. Father, I separate one from another. I change their languages, confuse them. I send civil war into the enemy's camp to let them destroy each other. Loose the person right now. Loose the person in the name of Jesus. I bring heal, healing. I speak healing into your life right now. I speak rest restoration I speak restitution upon your life right now I put the devil under your feet and keep him there father in Jesus I cage up every demon my God in the name of Jesus I put the blood of Jesus in those demon boxes let them be tormented night and day and I close this prayer right now father God I come against retaliation I come any retribution I come against any prayer for the spirits in the unmatchable name of Jesus okay let every man be a liar but God's word I tell you God's word is true and God's word says, by his stripes, by his wounds, by his blood, you were healed. Now be free. The truth has set you free. 이렇듯 마귀는 아무것도 아닙니다. 우리가 하나님 안에 있고 예수님의 이름으로 꾸짖으면 마귀는 떠나가게 되어 있습니다. 그러나 방언 기도를 강조했듯이 기도의 영성이 곧 파워라는 것을 매우 깊게 생각하고 실천해야 할 것입니다. 우리의 삶을 깨끗하게 한다면 언제나 마귀를 정복하고 하나님의 뜻을 이루는 자들이 될 것이라고 믿습니다. 이번 방송 여기까지 하겠습니다. 감사합니다.